So good morning. Today we read uh, Luke 9, 57 through 62. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man is nowhere to lay his head. To another, he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Wow, Jesus, be harsh, huh? Hmm. So what does he say to these people? Well, the first guy says, I'll go wherever you go. And Jesus says, well, I don't even have any place to, to sleep, you know. I don't even have a, have a home. I don't even have an RV. I was talking to somebody yesterday about their friends were traveling around the country in an RV. Sell your house and buy an RV and go. It's difficult, right? It's where Jesus is. He's walking around. He doesn't even <clears throat> doesn't have a, a bed to go to or a you know a sleeping bag. The other guy, he says, follow me. And that one says, well, let me go bury my father first. Now, in the ancient world, that was a, a duty of a of a child. And it doesn't mean, you know, his father's died and, and he's in there in the middle of the funeral, and let me go finish that up and then I'll come along in a day or two. No, this could be years to bury his father. He let me fulfill my filial responsibilities. Let me do the things that I'm supposed to do as a good son, I suppose. And um and I'll be along later. And Jesus says, well, let the dead bury their own dead. Um, you proclaim the kingdom of God. So Jesus isn't interested in uh, the family values of this guy um, taking care of his parents. And another one says, well, I'll follow you, but let me, let me go say goodbye to my family and to those at my home. And Jesus said, well, you know, no one who puts their hand to the plow and then looks back is really fit for the kingdom of God. If you're gonna, if you're gonna go, let's go. But if you're gonna go do this, now, what happens if you're plowing and you turn your head like this? The plow is going to go off sideways. Mm -hmm. The same thing that happens if you're driving a car and you start looking to the side, you're going to turn that way and, and hit the other, the other car's head on or something. You've got to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, I worked with a church years ago, and the worship committee chairman called me one day and He's asking me about who could preach for them and stuff, and and we're um, we're talking, and all of a sudden he says, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute," and I hear a bunch of noise, and he tells me afterwards what he's doing. He's in his combine, you know, doing a a row of corn. I I, I don't know if he was planting it or or harvesting, but anyway, he got to the end of the field, and he had to turn around and then reset the GPS, which you know was a matter of pushing a few buttons on his computer. So he did that, and he said, yeah, the GPS will run this thing on a straight line forever. I just got to make sure the line's where I want it to be. And uh, and then he could just sit there and, you know, do whatever. In this case, he was doing Presbyterian work. So, um, but without a GPS, you got to pay attention and to plow that field and plow it straight. And if you're not fit to do that, allegorically, metaphorically, then you're not fit for the kingdom of God. And that's, um, so Jesus is pretty demanding for these two people. Now, these are disciples who are going to physically follow him around Israel, walking around. And so there's some issues. You know, they have to, they have to make sure they are, their families are taken care of and they have to have money and they have to, you know, have a, a blanket and, and, and all of that stuff. And so, um, for them just to walk off behind Jesus, 
they've got to be committed because if they're not committed, they're going to start doing these other things and there's a problem. So for us, we're not going to be walking around behind Jesus, but what does it mean for us to have to, um, uh, to follow Jesus and, and, and to be a part of the kingdom of God? What does it mean for us to, um, what things do we have to let go of in order to follow Jesus? That's, there's your question. So ponder that today. What do you need to let go of? Even something benign, but, but, but do you need to let go of it? Think about that, and we'll see you tomorrow.